A man riding a bicycle dies in what Lexington police call a hit and run crash. We have an update on the investigation. A former UK student is in jail today, accused of doing something with one of these all over campus. A proposed compromise could create one new home for two facilities that help the homeless in Lexington. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good evening. Tonight we are learning more about a deadly hit and one crash in Lexington. Police say a man riding a bicycle was killed. It happened about three this afternoon on Newtown Pike near the Newtown Circle intersection. Police say the driver of a truck hit the man but didn't stop. Monique Blair is tracking the investigation. She joins us now live with the breaking details. Monique? Well, Amber and Sam, one lane is now open inbound New Circle Road, but you can see behind me traffic is still moving fairly slowly as it is still a very active scene out here at the corner of Newtown Pike and Newtown Circle Road after a bicyclist was struck and killed in a hit and run. Now, right now, accident reconstruction units are trying to figure out exactly how the man was riding his bike when he was hit by a pickup truck. Police say after the truck hit the bicyclist, it left the scene. With the help of witnesses, Writing down the license plate number of that truck driver, police say they found the person they believe to have been driving that truck at that person's home. Now, that person is in custody right now, but was first taken to the hospital. We talked to those witnesses who tell us they were involved in this accident. We thought somebody hit our trailer. When we turned around, we saw the body fly up, and <clears throat> the lady kept cutting us off. She went and let us exit, and we followed her because we noticed uh, she hit the body, and we just got the tags, took pictures of it. And Gave it to the police. Now you can see that bike is still laying in the grass off the, off the shoulder of the road behind me. I talked to a few people who work right near where this accident happened, and they tell me immediately after the accident happened, there were several people out here helping that man in administering CPR. Reporting live in Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. Monique, thank you. We are also tracking a breaking news alert tonight involving Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis. Within the last half hour, we have learned the Rowan County Attorney's Office has referred a charge of official misconduct against Davis to the Attorney General's Office. The move comes after Davis again refused to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples, even after an appeals court upheld a judge's ruling ordering her to issue the licenses. Because of being involved in litigation, the Rowan County Attorney's Office says they cannot prosecute Davis. Official misconduct is a misdemeanor. This afternoon, Davis's lawyers asked the Supreme Court to delay the ruling, ordering her to issue licenses until her appeal is finished. It started when a security officer noticed something unusual in a bathroom, but police say it turned into something very disturbing. And they've now arrested a man they say spied on people on the University of Kentucky campus. 24-year-old Ryan Smith faces many charges, including voyeurism. They say he placed hidden cameras in women's restrooms all over the UK campus. Bill Pendleton is tracking the investigation in our top story at six. Police say a writing pen was found inside a restroom and on it what they call a stealth camera. Which is just weird, especially so weird. with all like technology and stuff, like you're always being watched. You gotta be careful. Yeah. Like, Bathrooms like should not be a place for cameras. 24-year-old Ryan Matthew Smith of Garrett County is accused of placing the camera pin in multiple restrooms all over campus. He's facing more than 20 counts of voyeurism. The age range was very different. I mean, it was some from college age down to uh, to minors, uh, you know, 14 years old even. A security officer found the pin and it was tracked back to Smith during a five and a half month long investigation. So it's an unfortunate um, situation, but it's part of our society today where you're seeing these type of things happen because technology is so well advanced on, on making cameras so uh, compact and minute. It's not clear how Smith allegedly got the camera pin in women's restrooms. It's yeah. like, did he have someone help him out or like, you just, it makes you think. Smith said he did not want to talk to us from the Fayette County Jail in Lexington, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Smith is also charged with unlawful access to a computer and several sexual related offenses regarding minors. 
Today, three men face charges of recruiting gang members in Lexington. Lexington police say they watched as those men, along with some other people, took part in a gang initiation activity in a park last year. As Kristen Kennedy tells us, Lexington's police chief says officers are keeping a close eye on any gang activity in the city. On a September day during a sporting event at this city park, Lexington investigators say Gerald Smith, Gregory Smith, and Trevor Spencer participated in a gang initiation activity called a beat in. A Chief Mark watching. Barner described the beat in as a five minute group assault on a prospective gang member. They happen everywhere. You probably wouldn't recognize it, you probably wouldn't see it, you probably wouldn't see some of the signs or the uh, tattoos that they're having. We take care of those, we look at them, we monitor them, we try to stay proactive with. It. Chief Barnard says his investigators have been watching those three men ever since. Can we expect to see more arrests? I think we will. Both Smiths pleaded guilty in court today and were released on time served. Their charges were only misdemeanors. There's a lot of bad things that I'm sure happen up here, so I don't know. Everything that goes on, I just know that it is a rough area. People like Kevin Maddox living nearby weren't aware of what took place almost a year ago. Does Lexington have a gang problem? Every city has a gang problem because you have youth and you have youth violence and the social media. There is no geographical areas that are working with gangs anymore. So every city and every town has to recognize that if you have disgruntled youth or you have individuals looking into wanting to be associated with something, you're going to have some formalized gang initiation or problem. In Lexington, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Trevor Spencer faced additional charges today of trafficking marijuana, trafficking synthetic marijuana, trafficking cocaine, and possession of a handgun by a felon. He'll be back in court September 1st. Today, a judge sentenced a man convicted of killing a Lexington High School student. Deontay Hayes received 35 years in prison for murder, assault, and being a persistent felon. Police say Hayes killed 16-year-old Chaz Black and shot two other people in an apartment on Palumbo Drive back in 2012. Black's family tells us they feel like they've received some justice. I wouldn't want any parent, any relatives to go through nothing as the way we have. This has devastated our lives. Hayes will be eligible for parole in 20 years. He'll also have to pay more than $25,000 to Black's family for medical bills and funeral expenses. It could be a compromise to end the legal battle over Lexington's homeless shelters. Where should those shelters call home? Take a look with me. The Catholic Action Center is open to the homeless during the day, and then the Community Inn is open to the homeless at night, and both are near neighborhoods. And now they could be consolidated into one proposed location on Industry Road. New at 6, WKYT's Mike Linden has more on this shelter compromise. Two Lexington homeless shelters could potentially have a new home on Industry Road this September. If approved by the Urban County Council, the Catholic Action Center and the Community Inn will combine to become the city's only 24-hour homeless shelter. People will be able to have a place that they can come to receive all the services that we offer and actually even st spend the night. The Industry Road two-story building currently houses the Kentucky Career Center but Ramsey says that could change September 10th. If the vote passes on September 10th, Ramsey says the store here at God's Net will close and move to the new building on Industry Road, and all of the activities at the Catholic Action Center will also move to the new building. While nearby Industry Road business owners didn't want to appear on camera, they all voiced concern over the consolidation of the homeless shelters. City officials say while it might not be the best deal, it is one that will help a lot of people. This is what's good for the people of Lexington and the people specifically who are homeless, who suffer from mental illness, who suffer from, from substance abuse and addiction needs. This will make their lives better. Ramsey says the Community Inn and Catholic Action Center currently help hundreds of people every day, a number which dramatically increases during the winter months. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. Ramsey says if the vote passes, council on September 10th, the new shelter should open next spring.
Ah, you knew it wouldn't last, did you? After a week of fall like weather, it looks like changes on the way for the weekend. Not huge changes, but changes. And that keeps Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey employed. <laughs> that it does. Change is good. All right, you know what? It's been great this week. It's been absolutely beautiful for yours truly. Yeah, borderline on the uh, boring side as well. A little look outside right now Lexington, mix of sun and some clouds. Overall, another winter of a weather day coming to an end. WKYT weather watcher Amanda Roberts up into Bourbon County with the sunflowers soaking up the late August sunshine. Those temperatures right now mainly into the low 80s. Across most of central and eastern Kentucky. And if you're out and about this evening, it's going to be a quick drop again as soon as the sun sets. Though the deeper we get into the weekend, a couple of systems will begin to impact our weather. One across the Plain States will notice that increasing to the east. The other coming out of Georgia around the Atlanta area. That's where we're talking about an increase in cloud cover. Got a little bit of a spin down there, and that's some juice that will be heading toward our way by the latter part of the weekend. So a few storms return this weekend. Humidity levels will begin to come up as well. And all of this will lead to a tropical feeling seven day forecast that I will break down for you guys when I come back here in about 10 minutes. Tonight, a Franklin County teenager battling a serious illness will receive some help during a high school football game. 16 year old Bradley Kamek has been in the hospital for nearly three weeks fighting viral encephalitis. So, two Franklin County high schools playing each other tonight are raising money during the game. Garrett Weimer has the story. Right now, the stands here at Franklin County High School are empty. Just under an hour and a half now until the game against Western Hills kicks off. But this Friday night under the lights is about more than football. It's about a community coming together to help a Frankfurt family in need. It all started on August 10th when Frankfurt High School student Bradley Kamek suffered a seizure on the soccer field. He's been in a medically induced coma ever since. Meanwhile, folks from all over the city and county are doing what they can to help. Tonight, as two Franklin County high schools take to the football field, they'll be doing so with tributes to Kamek nearby. Both schools also encourage students to bring money to school today to help Kamek's family with medical expenses. The amount of money that's been raised in less than 24 hours to, to show that how much we can accomplish when we come together and work as one. Um, to me, that's what this is all about. It's, it's a beautiful thing to see all the rivalry get set aside for, uh, for a young man's individual and personal well-being because it has been legitimately set aside. To encourage students to bring in money to donate, the principal of the school who brought in the lesser amount of money will get a pie in the face at halftime of tonight's game. In Franklin County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. That is just great what they're doing tonight, and the two principals say they expect to raise about $10,000. Tonight, Kroger has announced it will soon close one of its Lexington stores. The grocery company says the Romney Road store in Lexington will close for good on September 12th. Kroger says the store has been losing money since 2008. People who live nearby tell us they're going to miss the store. I certainly would like to see a facility here that sells groceries in my neighborhood. It's, it's just sort of a nice community center. We see our friends. We run in, grab something. We do our weekly shopping here. Now, Kroger says the 103 people who work at that Romney Road store will be offered employment at other Lexington area stores. The Kroger stores on Euclid Avenue and Shinaway Road are both just a couple of miles away.